very good, Carlis. Thank you. So I think the way you play this movement is uh, very nice and beautiful. Beautiful sound, that is the very important thing that, it's, uh, that we, we produce a very beautiful sound from the piano. It's nice, it does really represent what it really is. Uh, because if we read here what is written, etwas lebhaft und mit der innigsten Empfindung, which means quite uh, lively uh, and with the innermost feelings, mm -hmm. or yeah. an innermost feeling, which I think you do very well. This is, uh, first of all, um, one of the most tender <laughs> movements uh, that Beethoven has written uh, maybe the most. It has very uh, loving feelings and tenderness. Um, and also it is the most laconic. Uh, the sonata form is here, but it is very seamless, meaning that there are no borders showing us exactly where is the second theme, where is the uh, final theme, where is the development, but it just goes and flows. It is like an, uh, a, a very long, uh, uh, unending uh, phrase. That's why Wagner liked this movement very much, because he somehow uh, uh, felt that this is an infinite uh, melody. And I think you play it well. Now, that said, I definitely anyway think you have to um, put in it some of the uh, some of the norms which are usually in Beethoven's music. So, uh, for example, I don't think you uh, should uh, just take, it is a free movement, but you should not take too much freedom, mm -hmm. I think. So in some places, I felt you slow down a little too much. I mean, we somehow lose the pulse or the beat. Here in this uh, movement, there are very many places where the beat is not clear, of course, here. But I don't think that Beethoven meant you can just play it very freely without inside you feeling the beat and feeling exactly where is the main uh, beat. So I think you, inside you, in your heart, you should continue counting. And other places also, I think, in the final uh, theme, uh, you, you also uh, somehow uh, slow down a little too much. Yeah. Uh, here. All the time feel, feel the beat in that. And then there are other things like crescendos and sforzatos. I think you could do more mm -hmm. in th those places where you can see them. So let's try, uh, start again from the beginning. I think this uh, beginning, you could even do it a little softer, like you, <laughs> the music was already sounding and you are joining in, like joining into a conversation. And then open up a little more to really fulfill this little crescendo that Beethoven has. surprise. Yes, I, I think you are doing it quite well. Maybe you can do more. And uh, I appreciate that you don't um, you know, uh, emphasize the thumb. It's good that you are playing. Because 
because to do better the diminuendo, I think, and to arrive here at to really very quiet. Can you try here from here again? I think this has to come on the third one, not before, so... One, uh, it's good to practice. Yeah. And no panic at all. I mean, very soft. From here again, please. A soft. Now it's the second theme. I, I like the character here, it's quite good. Uh, I don't know, but I feel that you could do... Uh, and then come here softer and not really emphasize it so much, a little bit softer so that you can do the crescendo here. And this is also, now you, you made it well, softer and a little bit like the string um, section of the orchestra, uh, like a comment of the string orchestra. The string section. Can you uh, try again here? Fill up the space here with the crescendo. Don't be shy. Here, this. Yeah. Good. Keep the tempo and do this. This forzato of the bass and this one, it's important. Take off the pedal. Important. So this beat is very important. Three, one. Not ta, ta. It should not be late because then we will not understand how previously you counted. Yes, and more prominent. Show it more. And now the next one. Very quietly. Yeah, I don't be afraid or shy to do very direct blocks, forte and piano, and forte and piano. Make this crescendo, uh, which happens only in one bar. I think it's very important that you do it actively. Change the pedal. Um, and here you ke should keep uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, and now. Uh, 
more, more sforzato, because, I mean, this is a bit of intemper. He does sometimes uh, show, it's, although in this movement he is more soft and uh, like hugging, but uh, sometimes uh, then you can see his own character, the uh, willpower and all that. And I think you should bring it. Don't put too much pedal also here. shorter pedals like it's very important that you don't do any diminuendo here suddenly piano bravo yes good crescendo here and when you arrive to this chord just the last one can be a little later to emphasize it even more agogically and uh, here open more to I like very much your tempo it, it, I think I would also uh, do it like this. But if you also, I mean, today it was nice, please don't yeah. slow down. Uh, if you want to, in general, take a slower tempo, also I think it's, it's allowed. But yeah. it's allegretto ma non troppo. I mean, Beethoven wanted to emphasize that you don't play too slowly. Mm -hmm. And now the second movement. And I want to tell you that when you perform this, uh, don't wait too long before the second movement starts. Yeah. Uh, I would say, uh, as a performing um, moment, uh, this is good to even think about it as attacker.
good. Uh, Carlis, I think I would like you to now, you are of course very um, concerned about playing it cleanly. It is a very yeah. difficult movement, I know. Uh, but I think you, uh, I would uh, like to encourage you to think more about the, the character. Uh, what does it uh, mean, you know, Lebhaft and Marsh Messick? So, uh, uh, in my opinion, I find uh, much heaviness in your playing. And I think you should uh, think about it like a little uh, lighter. It yeah. is, it, this movement takes the place of the scherzo in a, uh, in a sonata. So, uh, uh, and the trio, you know, uh, also the character of the trio of this scherzo may be um, a little softer to make a little contrast between them, uh, more lyrical uh, and uh, not so fast. So I think, especially here, a little lighter, and be very, very exact with the rhythm because sometimes you have triplets. Mm. Yeah. It's better to even exaggerate it in that way than to play triplet. Let's try again. Sometimes there are some accents where they shouldn't be here. Here, yes, because it continues the crescendo. But there is the phrasing anyway. And then. So, not. Uh, uh, um, maybe, maybe uh, you are seeing crescendo, then you are doing really every uh, note louder than the other. And um, yes, sometimes crescendos are like that. Every note is louder. Every chord, for example, is louder than the previous one. But here you need to continue the phrasing. And not, uh, uh, you know, do the crescendo in general, of course. Yeah. Regardless, so let's try. And uh, it, the the sound has to be joyful, and not uh, uh, dark. More more accent on the higher voices. Then let's uh, continue. And now, listen to this theme a little better, to the end, not only the beginning of it. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I feel that you are doing, yes, uh, uh, the um, uh, two notes. Uh, you know, I don't remember who said that. Maybe it was Hans von Bülow who said two, or was it Schnabel, maybe Schnabel. The most difficult thing to play on the piano is two notes, slurred yeah. by, by a slur. So it is, I think. And then, tiro. Not Okay? They sound like separate notes, like two notes. It has to be like one intonation. Let's try. singing sound, and then here. 
listen to the lower voice maybe more than the upper voice. <laughs> Here, what, in your opinion, is happening here? I mean, there's some kind of uh, calming, calming moment for, like, uh, to come back like to silence the silence before a storm. Yeah, before the yes, a calming moment. Yes, yes, like a, a completely a different uh, a state of mind. Yeah. Uh, like a little bit in a in a sleep or in a dream. And I think you should try to find the right sound there. It's not, this is very difficult. The two bars before, it's very difficult. Play them as calm as possible. <laughs> and only in this moment, the storm is coming. Yeah. But here, I think you are not calm enough. Let's try. And the sound, really very, very uh, cloudy, a little bit like an impressionistic kind of sound, with a pedal. It's loud. Yes, a little bit better. Only here, clean. More, yes. Uh, Carlis, also, I would like you, I can hear very well what uh, this, this, but I would like to more singing here. Uh, I think don't jump too much, play more legato. Absolutely, I think. Mean. And then now when you played the trio, I felt that you were playing too fast. Yeah. So uh, immediately uh, uh, define for yourself exactly. Without an uh, exact uh, tempo and pulse in general. Because you should not do any crescendo. Look, he doesn't do uh, uh, write any crescendo. And this is a different theme. So show it and don't continue as if it is continuing the, what is before. Now, this one is just an introduction. Here it starts. and be careful not to do any crescendo, that's good.
this is this all this is good i can hear very well the imitation and the canon and this here but this rhythm i think is not so good keep it exact exact not not like this a little bit uh, the um, uh, crotchet with a dot longer If you don't do enough crescendo, then it's difficult to do pianissimo afterwards. Really actively do crescendo, don't be shy of it. I understand that it doesn't arrive to forte. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe that's why you are uh, taking care. But you need to think about doing this contrast when the pianissimo comes, that it really uh, sounds uh, like pianissimo. Let's try again from here. <laughs> Yes, you can make a stop. Uh, please, uh, if this would be uh, played on an orchestra, the conductor will definitely tell someone there, maybe the horn or something, I can't hear you. This is the entrance. Yeah, uh, uh, play. Exactly the rhythm, and very quiet, very quiet. And so on. Yeah. The same things uh, uh, when they repeat. Here in this part, um, it reminds me a little bit of this. It probably has the same feeling of calm before the storm. Of course, it doesn't have the same pedaling, but I think also you should try to play it very, very pianissimo. Yeah. And only here is the moment that the storm starts or is uh, felt mm -hmm. that, that it is coming. Uh, third movement.
maybe we can make a little stop here. Um, very good. I think it's important that you look at this adagio ma non troppo. Again, Beethoven wants us not to play too slow, too slowly. So, uh, yes, langsam und sehnsuchtvoll, which is uh, full of uh, longing. And slow, langsam, yes, but slow. Not too much adagio. Um, definitely here Beethoven is um, paying um, tribute or homage to Bach. Because in this theme, uh, the trio sonata from Bach's um, uh, musical offering. This, uh, I think it then continues like that. Very often Bach, especially I think in his later sonatas, uh, Beethoven uh, remembers Bach and it, it really uh, uh, means something. Of course, not only the theme, the quotation, but also the polyphonic texture, uh, the um, uh, imitation here. Definitely, it's uh, like a fugue. His um, uh, sonata opus 110, where he puts two fugues, and where the arioso is a. Uh, A quotation from uh, the St. John's, uh, Es ist vollbracht. So um, here also, you have to have a very serious, very deep uh, feeling and uh, show, I think, be very, very uh, in control. Here, I felt that you are playing Suddenly it comes out, be careful, very, very even, and uh, very the same kind of uh, sound without any accents or anything. Um, anyway, now unfortunately we don't manage anymore. We should go to the Chopin etude. Yeah.
very good, uh, Carlis. You play it fairly cleanly, I would say, quite cleanly. Uh, I, I think it's uh, quite good. Um, still, I would encourage you to listen more. Here, there are several factors. Of course, there is the theme, which is like a Slavic melody. And there is the, all the arpeggios, which should form uh, a sound where we can hear the harmony. And I think the best thing you could do is um, imagine an orchestra playing so that you don't just play, you know, pianistic sound. <laughs> but try to uh, bring out the full sound of, of uh, an orchestra just somehow continuously playing this harmony, like a tremolo or uh, uh, whatever you want. And on top of all that comes the theme. <laughs> which should really be like, I don't think, uh, I appreciate that you don't bang it, like uh, sometimes we hear, but uh, it should come through, like trombones. Like imagine even, uh, this is maybe strange, but Mahler's symphonies, for example, and there is a trombone coming out through all the texture. And I think that was not enough. Now, in my opinion, this is more important. This is not so important. Uh, it's just a comment to this, yeah. or a second person replying to the first person who is singing this uh, theme with all his passion. So try this. Maybe you can do more even this. Uh, I th get a little bit confused with the beat. Yeah. No, not too much rubato and stopping a little bit maybe. <laughs> so just the thing is not to... Uh, so hurry. Uh, more in, in the in the beat. In tempo. Yes. But uh, yes, you um, somehow tried to find a better sound, in my opinion, now. And you, uh, you of course, know that this etude is called the ocean. So try to, let's try to find also that uh, aspect, too. The waves uh, going up and down. And then here, the aspect of an ocean, I think, um, uh, here. Uh, And then you just go very, very deep down and dark uh, into darkness 
uh, I want to say, and very, very quiet. Already here, I think. Uh, so maybe you want to uh, play A flat major again? I would not advise you to pl play quiet yet. Yeah. On the contrary, maybe, although, I, I mean, yes, I, I would say that, of course, you have the right if you want to, but I think on the contrary, after this, with the renewed energy. So, you want this? Um, Now, starting here, it goes in four bars. On four, 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 and every one you have to phrase. Don't play just separate notes. Try to find what uh, you need to show there. It's a little bit uh, uh, just noise. It's just noise. Uh, Chopin puts an accent on the on the first note, but I would say uh, you can help a little bit. So here. is the note which arrives. <laughs> to the theme. So I think you should listen to it more. There is just noise there. very much. I think it is justified to play piano here because of the crescendo which is coming later and the great, great uh, rise to the end. Uh, did you notice here the, uh, the slur that Chopin puts, the long note to the B flat and then uh, the, the left hand two G and then I think it's important and it's not bad if you there stop. So we hear this modulation very, uh, very well. And don't play it too, too loudly. You still have time to make the crescendo. Because I think here, even. Yes. softer. I think that it's too... 
and also listen to because this is also important of course da, 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 this also uh, so try again from here this part the first time octave lower. Yes. And here you don't need to be, uh, I think you can play like this if you want. It can be a little bit uh, stronger, I think, that it has to be heard like a bell more, so it can be like a karate kind of hand. You have much bigger hands, but anyway, because I see that you play with the tip of the finger, so you can play it a, a little stronger if you use the whole uh, finger, I think. Very well done. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs>